Good afternoon. My name is Marion Timms and I'm here today to interview somebody else who specialises in anxiety. She's a freedom from, freedom from anxiety coach um, and also is a mind mastery, sorry, a freedom from anxiety expert and a mind mastery coach. And she very much deals with what's going on in the mind that might be stopping us sleep. So I'm bringing it back to sleep, always interested to learn different aspects. Um, so I'll just bring her on and then quickly recap what I've talked about before we talk to her. So Caroline Rushforth, welcome and come on. Hello. Hello. Hi, Marion. You all right? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here with me today. Um, as you know, I've been talking about sleep all through lockdown and since um, advising people on the best ways to get a good night's sleep. And I have touched on the fact that if we don't sleep, it tends to make us more anxious um, because, well, in my in my understanding, that's why I brought you on. Um, during sleep, certain processes happen where I believe the brain tissue shrinks and it allows flushing through of all the um, heavy metals and toxins that have accumulated during the day. And, and that's from a sort of biochemical point of view. If that doesn't happen, then um, it can predispose you to um, all sorts of things. So from your perspective, Caroline, tell me why the brain aspect of it you know what what happens in our brain or doesn't happen if we don't sleep so sleep is one of the most important things that we can do for our body physically and mentally and that's because when we are asleep at night we go into what's called rapid eye movement um, which is where the eyes move from left to right very quickly and what happens is that the eyes are then, because uh, the eyes are connected to the brain and they are basically working together to process all of the kind of things that we go through throughout the day, um, it could be conversations we've had with people, what we had for dinner, exercise that we did, people that we spoke to, stresses, events, traumas, um, anything that's really happened during the day or even that week, the mind at night needs to rest in order to do that recalibration. And it's when that recalibration doesn't happen or that people are that have disrupted sleep for sometimes no fault of their own. No, normally it's, it could be stress keeping you awake at night. But if that processing doesn't take place, then uh, what happens is these kind of emotional states sort of get shoved to the back of the mind. And the mind isn't able to sort of process the way that it would normally. So what happens is we're, we all have energy, emotions are energy, and throughout the day, we're all experiencing emotions of various different areas. Um, and if those emotions don't get processed because they are energy moving out of the body, then they, they kind of fester in the back of the mind. So, and when that happens, people will wake up groggy, they will um, feel perhaps a little bit out of body, um, mood is low, um, hunger is another example because the body is looking for energy because it's feeling so lethargic and so tired. So that calibration and that sleep at night is, is important for that reason. Okay, so um, what, do you have any suggestions for people who perhaps have trouble dealing with you know what's going on in their head and they can't switch off and I mean I, I've suggested various things but it'd be interesting to get your perspective on it as well. Yeah sure so we have to know that we, we all live very busy lives I think perhaps that's actually come to the forefront a little more over the last few months I think people actually realizing just how incredibly busy they have been and how stressed they have been how unhappy they have been and we need to ensure that we bring this kind of sense of well-being and balance and equilibrium into our life and this is where the whole work-life balance comes from because if we're not allowing our body to recover then um, build up happens in the body, emotional build up happens in the body. And this is for men, this is for women, this is um, for everyone. If you're human, you have emotions and animals as well. You know, they do their um, incredible thing, thing when they're uh, sleeping as well. I mean, you know, we have to allow time to give our body to recover, to balance, to um, process. Um, and if you're living a really busy life and you're not giving yourself that time to kind of come back to yourself and tune in and check in with yourself, then chances are there's going to be a lot of kind of things being covered up. So um, this, I get this a lot with clients where they're just completely disconnected from their body. They're, they don't even realize what their whole default system is at. For instance, is it 
you know, when everything stopped and you're not drinking and you're completely sober and, um, you know, kids have gone to bed and whatever, you know, what is going on in your body? How are you actually feeling emotionally? Because that really is our kind of like default sort of place. Um, is it is it feeling good? Is it feeling depleted? Is it feeling knackered? Um, and that's a really good opportunity to really tune in with the body. And when we go to sleep at night, the body needs to be in a kind of calm place. It needs to be relaxed because if it isn't, you've got all this kind of buzzy stuff happening in, in your head, then it's going to try and sort it out. And, and, and also, I'm sure people have noticed this before, as soon as you kind of hit, hit your bed or hit your bed, but as soon as you sort of lie, lie down and rest, suddenly it's like vroom, all this stuff comes up because it's like you've been really busy throughout the day everything's been kind of disguised in busyness and then you have that opportunity to be alone with yourself and suddenly it's like all of this kind of inner self-talk feelings anxieties all coming up um, because they're looking for your attention and long term if we're not dealing with our emotions and 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 taking time to connect with ourselves, these can manifest as illness. That is what illness is. It's a buildup of emotion in the body that hasn't been able to be processed either through sleep, you know, decent night's sleep, eating properly, exercising. That was another one of my points that I was going to make. You know, we do need to move the body. We we need to be expending enough energy in a good way so that the body's like, yeah, I'm going to recreate some new hormones now and I'm going to give you some melatonin because I can really feel that like now's a really good time to sort of chill out and it's it's dark and it's nighttime and that's when melatonin really starts to, to uh, be created in the body as well. So can you tell us just a little bit about melatonin for those people who don't even know what melatonin is? So melatonin is the sleep hormone it's the hormone that the body naturally creates in order to help us sleep. However, melatonin can be depleted. Um, it can be depleted actually by technology, by use, use of mobile phones, too much stuff on the phone, too, too much kind of being on the tablets at night, television, all of those kind of like external stimuli can affect the way that melatonin is created. And also if it's ignored, um, i.e. you kind of start feeling tired at say 10, half 10, 11, and then you just kind of plow through it and you stay up and watch telly till 11, 12, you can kind of miss the boat a bit. So it's actually really important to get the body into a rhythm of familiarity when bedtime is and when, when awake state is. So we can see this in nature. Yeah, nature is a mathematical miracle that we should all be very, um, you know, proud to have it around us and really take note of. It's our greatest teacher. And you'll see, you know, in nature that there's cycles and there is dark and there is light and the birds know when, you know, it's time to start settling down and they know when to get up. And when we're actually in a really decent sleep rhythm, we're connected to our body, you'll start to notice melatonin being created. You'll start to notice, oh, I'm feeling tired now. And then that's the point to go to bed. Again, if you have got too much busyness going on, too much stuff going on around your head, you're feeling stressed, you're feeling overwhelmed, you might miss the boat on that. Um, or for other people, it can actually manifest as actually passing out and being physically exhausted. Um, but that's not good either to be kind of going in that direction. So um, being in tune with your sleep cycle, allowing yourself that time to really connect with your body, to connect with your emotions, tune in what's going on, is there pain anywhere? How is your mood? Because actually, when you go to sleep at night, it's a, depending what mood you're in, will be what you wake up in. So if you wait, if you go to sleep feeling a bit moody and a bit hacked off or a bit stressed, you're going to wake up in that mood as well. So wow. again, it's really important to take time to be with yourself, check in. Okay, what do I need to do here? What do I need to recognize in myself? What's that problem? What's that thing niggling in the back of my mind? And actually, you could get a pen and paper and just write it down. If there's something bothering you, something someone said to you that's really irritated you, just write it down. Or if it's something you've got to do tomorrow, perhaps you've got a whole list of errands to do and you're, you know, churning it and you think, oh, well, I will remember tomorrow. But the mind needs you to really sort of take out as much as it can so it's got that chance to sleep. Um, and be able to relax and yeah go into that rapid eye movement so that it's doing its recalibration it's so great to hear you say a lot of this because this is these are things that I've touched on like the brain dumping you know write it down in a journal if you want to and um, the fact that you're saying um too much screen time can affect the melatonin you know I've had um 
quite interesting debates with people about whether or not it makes a difference. And, and it's so good to hear from you that it does make a difference, it, you know, because there's a reason for it making a difference. Um, having a routine, you know, as you say, trying to empty the brain, be calm, have the bedroom as a place of calm instead of, I call it a curry showroom with all the electronics. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. So you, who is your ideal client? You know, who, who do you typically work with? Well, I typically work with super caring professional women who are feeling overwhelmed, overburdened, have a lot going on in their life. Maybe they're juggling kids, work, husband or you know, wife or whatever, um, and generally just have very busy lives. Um, and they're not even sure quite what's wrong. They just know that they just feel very emotionally overwhelmed. Maybe they're not sleeping. Maybe they have fears. You know, I work a lot with fear um, to, because fear is, you know, one of the greatest di di things that actually um, people don't really realize is, is, is what is happening at the time. So fear comes disguised in many things, comes disguised in panic and anxiety. Um, but generally, I would say that most of my clients have un underlying anxiety. And that is really just to build up a fear and of um, not really feeling in control, feeling overwhelmed, feeling overburdened. So um, I work with them to dissolve worry, to basically have freedom from anxiety. People seem to think that anxiety is something that I have to live with for the rest of their life and I can tell you that through the hundreds of clients I work with that's not necessarily true um, and so I'm just being careful with what I say because obviously yes. I know there are medical reasons why people have anxiety yeah. but generally if it's just kind of lifestyle there are ways to actually be completely free from anxiety um, but like I say anxiety can come disguised as being really stressed out really highly emotional having lots of fears and worry negative self-talk so I work with them to really reprogram that self-talk reprogram that thinking look at lifestyle um, and help them to basically make changes that are much more positive so that they can have more energy and freedom to prosper in work and relationships and lifestyle Okay, that that's 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 really good. I mean, obviously, that's your ideal client. You you work with other people. You work with men, presumably as well. But I have the woman is your ideal client. Yeah, I've I've worked with men. Uh, I love working with with men. Actually, you know, it's it's so great because they just kind of like want to sort of just get it over and done with. It's like like you know, here's the thing can we deal with it? And I'm like, yep, let's go. You know, I want, I love working with people who are just really committed and really up for change. And I find that, you know, men are like, they're very often very committed and they do want the change and they make the change and then off they go and they're happy. Um, so that's obviously really endearing for me and really rewarding and great to see that. Um, and I also train other coaches and therapists in a technique called wing wave coaching, which works on rapid eye movement and muscle testing. So that's where the whole kind of, um, sleep kind of knowledge comes from and brain um and uh unconscious mind um information that i'm able to share is what i teach through my trainings so you get them to do this rapid eye movement when they're awake or yeah so it's an awake state so if people have had this and this is again what can create anxiety and stress if they have had disrupted sleep and this could come with being a young mum um this could be with just having lots on your mind or it could just be that some people are just naturally not so good at sleeping um and if there is a build-up of this emotion uh we use a muscle test to uh test into where stress memories are um which i won't go into too much detail here because it is a little bit overwhelming but basically the body is giving me feedback as to where we need to go in the unconscious mind to find when there was a time um, that there was a stress and then we go in we find the stress and we do the rapid eye movement very fast uh, reaching auditory kinesthetic and visual all the sensory pro all the sensory processes um, to get it moved on and then in order to go back and test if something shifted or changed we do the muscle test again and that gives us feedback as to you know how we're doing and where we need to go but that's what I love about the technique because it can take us to places very much in the in the unconscious mind sometimes people think that they know what their fear is related to or their stress is related to but actually using a muscle test we go into the time where that strongest fear or that strongest emotion was felt and that is often in you know in our younger years and that's because we have smaller minds in our younger years. Um, and that's also why sometimes children who have had trauma can't always re remember what's happened. Um, the mind is just simply too small to actually process what happened at that time. 
so not everyone I work with has had trauma, but I have worked with a lot of clients who have had trauma. Um, and sometimes it's trauma they don't even realize they've had. Um, but it's very quick, it's very effective, and my clients always leave feeling very uplifted and very supported. Um, and they feel as though something's just changed and shifted. It's almost as though like the weight's been lifted off their shoulders and they just feel lighter and happier. I mean, that's generally the feeling that you get going through the experience of working on my programs. And is that a, an almost instantaneous thing sometimes? You know, you could, I don't know, could you perhaps change something in one session or? Yeah. So I had can. a client. Yeah. So um, I, I find this a lot actually. Um, this is quite a, quite a common example. It's a client who has um, like procrastination situation. They, there's just something they can't seem to get on and do. And often that's to do with a learning block that they've had in the past and a stress that's come from, say, the teacher or something that happened at school. And it's very quick. We can just kind of go to that time where the teacher said something or did something or the friend in the playground or they had to speak up and talk in front of people and everyone was looking at them. And then the mirror neurons are happening where it's like they're looking at everyone going, oh, what are they thinking? Are they, they're judging me or something or they just feel really scared and we can just go in and we can get it and we can do the waving um go in and you know use the muscle test as our compass to check that we've got it um and just check we, if we need to go anywhere else um and it's cleared and it's like they just feel this kind of like epiphany or clearing or clarity it's incredible like i've seen people's lives change like within 10 minutes using the technique wow so it's interesting i guess it's a bit chicken and egg really in terms of sleep and anxiety and uh, you know, are the people that come to you are generally are they not sleeping because of the way they are, or they they you know it's it's which comes first? Are they not sleeping so they feel anxious, or are they anxious which is stopping them sleep, or you know Ooh. which way around does it go? Um, I would say it's probably neither of those because anxiety okay. anxiety is more a time where a person hasn't felt safe in their life. So um, anxiety is very much a feeling of losing control or not being in control. So now, yes, there will have been times in their life where perhaps sleep has been disrupted, but not necessarily for everything. Um, like I say, when we're children and when we're younger, um, the subconscious mind doesn't know how to process things as well. Sometimes it can be too big for it for it to process. So if, if you imagine, Marion, when you go on one of your fabulous holidays and you take loads of photographs and snaps and then you come back and you want to send them out to the family and you put them in an email and the email is like stuck because there's too much data. It just doesn't go through. It's a really good analogy, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that's basically what the mind's trying to do. It's like trying to send this email that doesn't send um and, and what we're able to do you know with wing wave and using rapid eye movement is to go in and kind of break it down um so that it's a, it, it kind of becomes a smaller uh block to process if that makes sense now what's interesting is that can actually happen in our childhood and then in adulthood we think well i was only five years you know i was five years old and that was ages ago and oh my god you know i've never thought that it would be anything to do with that well you don't you don't go into adulthood and think oh I remember that time where I stood up in class and I felt really embarrassed some people might remember that depending on the circumstances but others you just take it with a pinch of salt and you just want to kind of move on in life and you don't really think about it but those are those kind of what happens is the mind um, associates pain to that situation it's the same with exercise and losing weight you've got to associate I don't want to go off track here but you've got to associate joy to those things because if there is any pain in anything the mind's going to take you away from it because that's what it's programmed to do the body is a survival mechanism you know it's it's constantly taking us away from danger and actually that's what anxiety is really is a very physical response to um feeling in danger and that can be anything from queuing in a supermarket and not feeling safe to being you know on a in a car accident it, it's the same thing like the mo the mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imaginary so um that's just what's so clever about it really is that, um we we can take the smallest thing the smallest thing could be stopping somebody from doing one of the biggest life-changing things and then sometimes it's the big things that you know we're we are able to just kind of move on from and, and somehow the mind just seems to process it and and uh it, it doesn't have so much significance Wow. I mean, yeah, we went a little bit off piece, but that, that's absolutely fine. So um, 
have you got three tips? I mean, you sort of suggested brain dumping and something like that and, and being calm. I mean, have you got any other little gems that you can give away? Well, uh, I mean, I was going to kind of round up what my tips were. Any other gems? I mean, I've, oh, I mean, I'm a big fan of watch what you eat because things like caffeine and, you know, dark chocolate too late, stimulants. I mean, that can be stimulants through telly, can't it? It can be stimulants through red wine, through caffeine drinks. They're all going to have an impact. You know, food is has such an amazing impact on our on our system and, and how we sleep and um, how much sleep we get. So I would say if I was to add another tip in there, um, you know, be aware of, of the caffeine, how much caffeine you, you're having. I gave up caffeine about five or six years ago, might have been longer than that now, because I was noticing that that was stopping me because I've always been one of those very light sleepers. Um, and I was the sort of person that would go to bed with a lot on my mind and I was drinking, you know, Diet Cokes or whatever. Um, and I gave up soda and I gave up caffeine, you know, I gave up dairy and wheat because there's so many things that I'm sensitive to. Um, but I know my body and I know what affects me. And I think that all I'm saying is, you know, when we're connected to our body, we know what it needs and what it doesn't like. So um, even that caffeine drink at lunchtime can actually have an impact on depending how sensitive you are to caffeine, but can have an impact on sleep as well. Yeah. I was talking about that yesterday because it has a it's known to have a half-life of approximately six hours. So it right. takes six hours for 50% of it to diminish in your system. And it also binds to the adenosine receptors. And adenosine builds up during the day to make you feel sleepy. But if the caffeine's binding to the same receptors, it, it doesn't, it's not going to make you feel sleepy. You're going to be woom. Yeah. You know, and every time you have a coffee, you're going to be more woom. So yeah, it's yeah. been absolutely fascinating talking to you. And um, I'm sure there's things that you've touched on that people might want to know more about. So would you be kind enough to pop your links below afterwards? And then if anybody's got any questions to either of us, pop them below and we'll always come back in and answer them. Is that okay? Yeah, that's lovely. Well, that's been great thank you thanks for having no, thank me thank you for coming on it's um i'm just sitting here thinking <laughs> <laughs> yeah really interesting thank you so much for joining me today you're welcome right? you take care bye-bye bye thank you bye-bye